Uh, for that, I want to welcome in Jenny Horn, markets correspondent, get a closer look at NVIDIA. All right. Shares actually finished lower today. They're higher today. But talk to me about some of your takeaways from uh, CEO Jensen Wong's keynote address. I know, Diane. I was watching NVIDIA's stock like tick by tick on the session yesterday, just waiting to see some movement. We didn't really get it, frankly. We chopped around around 2.5% lower to about 2% lower. So it wasn't by any means a, a super, super downbeat session. But it also wasn't the reaction, I think, many of the, the sell-side analysts that were enthusiasts behind behind GTC really wanted to see. So well, there were definitely things to be excited about still, as you did note on the top of your show. I mean, partnerships, they did announce several new ones, including one with that they would be teaming up with Cisco as well as T-Mobile, and also did say that some of their other partnerships that they've already had some relationships with, like IBM, Micron, GE Healthcare, and Supermicro Computer, and as well as service now were intact. We did see that with Grace Blackwell now in full production. Wong also did show off the NVIDIA Dynamo. Dynamo is distributed and it really is right now a serving library, which they did describe as essentially an operating system of an AI factory. They said that this can aid Blackwell and Hopper with a giant leap in their inferencing performance. Blackwell is also seeing now, right now, that, that, that over the next two generations, Blackwell Ultra and the widely speculated Rubin will also be pretty much what we expected. They did say that Blackwell Ultra has more memory, twice the bandwidth of Blackwell, as well as that will be coming in the second half of 2025. Now, for the next generation Rubin Ultra, that will be available in the second half of 2027. That has now 15 times more overall inferencing power as well as various speeds in which that it is more efficient and basically just go, is going to cut down costs tremendously is, is what we heard from NVIDIA. So I also think that something I, I was seeing that did create a lot of headlines were the robots. Wong did also show off their Groot N1, their foundational open source model for robots, as well as announcing the autonomous driving push, which they have a partnership with GM now in place to do so and did say that they're going to expand and utilize 6G, which was cracking me up because I've been a longtime crit cr critic of 5G. I don't think we're quite there yet as far as infrastructure, but that was something that, that created headlines. So yeah, I, I'm skeptical on, on 6G. Right? I, I don't know about 5G yet, but, but still lots to be excited about. Felt more like a reconfirmation though of what we already knew, Diane, which is maybe why we didn't see the fireworks that many had been hoping for. That's what I was wondering because I guess we, you know, the kind of street kind of knew that we were going to hear more about a new chip. Um, but I wonder if just the expectations are just so high in general when it comes to NVIDIA. I mean, they are still clearly the front runner when it comes to the chip space. And, you know, they've just really had a downbeat year. I mean, um, uh, essentially most of the MAG-7 has this year. Um, do you think that uh, there was the, just the street was looking for more to hear about, you know, I don't know, another even new chip because they kind of knew Vera Rubin was coming? It did feel somewhat like a, a buy the rumor, sell the news type event where it, it wasn't that we were lower because there wasn't anything to be excited about. That's not entirely true. And I, I think it felt very reminiscent of NVIDIA and the way it performs now on the back of earnings where we talk about expectations for their earnings so, so extensively in the street, prices and all this volatility, then we haven't really seen earnings moves be, I mean, that that much able to rock, rock the boat. So I think that this felt like an earnings event. Maybe this is what happens when you've become as massive as NVIDIA has, although smaller than it used to be, granted, but I, I think it felt very much like an earnings event because, yes, even the more you read about some of his commentary, I think that there's actually more to be excited about. I was a bit more pessimistic yesterday talking about this with Oliver Rennick, but you hear things like cost efficiencies, timelines that are intact with what the street have been expecting. All of this is great sentiment for the, the overall AI story. And we will hear from more companies now in the coming days. So maybe those can move the overall I mean, individual stock components. But this, as far as NVIDIA is concerned, wasn't disappointing, just wasn't enough. All right, Jenny Horn, co-host of NextGen. Thanks a ton for the deep dive into the latest from NVIDIA and Jensen Wong.